in part D, the impedance is purely resistive when it is on the somewhere along the horizontal axis of the Smith chart. At that, anywhere along that line, the imaginary part is zero, and so the input impedance is purely resistive. So we want to get to that somewhere along the horizontal axis. So here is ZL plotted again, and again we can read off where we are on the wavelengths towards the generator. We need to know how far we want to rotate it to get to that horizontal axis. So again we're going in the wavelengths towards the generator direction, which is the clockwise direction, as we're moving away from the load. And we can see that the first time we cross the horizontal axis is right here. And at that point, we can label it, it's either 0 or 0 0.5. And since we started at 0.338, we might as well use the 0.5 value since we're going up in value. So, um, at this position, uh, let's see, it's asking for the shortest line length and what is the input impedance. So, we can find the line length there by taking 0.5 lambda minus 0.338 lambda. So the distance to that z in is 0.162 lambda. And then we can read off little z in. Little z in is 0.38. We can see that by reading off the sideways values here. 0.3 is here. Point, uh, then it goes in intervals of 0.02. So we can read off an approximate value of 0.38. And don't forget to normalize. This is separate from that arrow. So z in is little z in times z naught, which is 38 ohms.